There's something that I've been saying on my channel that I've been wanting to try for absolutely ages, and that is wild camping. But the one thing stopping me was the simple fact that I didn't actually have a tent that I could use until now. So I have now purchased the Nature Hike Cloud Up 2 upgraded version. So I had actually meant to buy the solo version, but kind of accidentally on purpose ended up buying the two person tent. Now this does have a massive advantage. You can probably guess what that is, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But the plan for now and tonight is to do the car camping version of car camping on your driveway. So what that means is we're going to do a wild camp, well, a not wild camp in my garden. But the main reason really is to test all the gear that I've got so I can get an idea as to whether or not I have the right stuff, what else I need, what I won't need, because I have been buying a lot of bits and bobs off Timu and Amazon, but certainly tonight will give me a very good flavour of what I don't have. I'm looking at all of this wearing two different hats. The first hat is as a solo wild camper and the second hat is if we are couples camping on a campsite. But I think what my ultimate plan for tonight is to get everything into one of these. Now my logic for that is if I was wild camping and I was using just this then I reckon that's probably about right. Now of all the things I've bought that is probably massively unnecessary, well it has to be this. But it's quite cool and I got it on wholesale. Basically it's I think two meters by one meter, it has cords you can tie it up and I'm thinking in theory in the right location it would act as quite a good screen. Okay, well, I think that's my first attempt at transferring what I would need. It is over the box load, but to be honest, things like this I wouldn't take if I was wild camping. I'd take the stuff out of it. And likewise, I wouldn't have two of these. And actually, I'm looking forward to show you what I'm actually going to use as a cooker. Now, you'll know I've got that camping stove that is powered by these. Well, Obviously I can't use that camping stove on a wild camp, it's too big and heavy, but I've managed to find something. Sounds healthy. So is this one. But I've managed, to, but I've managed, <laughs> but, but I've managed to find something that works on these and I think it's well cool. And now it's time to do the best bit, which is putting up the tent. Just like that we are all set up and I'm hoping I've done justice as to just how easy this tent is to pitch. The only thing I've not done probably particularly well are the guidelines or guide ropes over they're called and the ones I've put in probably aren't perfect but I'm in the garden and it's more about just testing it but as you can see there is absolutely 
stacks of room in here more than enough room for two people and for a solo there is masses of room dare I say even more room than in a Zafira. the only difference with this and the Zafira is we might have a lot more floor space but you do have slightly less roof space you could say but it is a nice tent it is a good tent and one of the good things about this tent is that there are two little areas where you can put stuff so you have a little hook up top here which is ideal for lights now I do have this monster one that I use for car camping and whilst yes I could dangle that down and that would give me more than enough light it would probably give me too much light so what I've got instead is this little tiny one that I picked up from Timu it's only about a pound fifty and I think that will work absolutely perfectly for that spot another good feature about this tent it has a very small vestibule it's called just out the front so basically that means when I zip that up when I go to bed there's going to be a little bit of space there where in theory if you were wild camping you could put your rucksack if you needed to or your dirty shoes but to be honest when you look at how much room is inside this tent I don't think that's much of a problem when you're soloing So just to be simple for tonight, I'm gonna to use my car camping foam because I've ordered a lightweight, cheap one from Timu once again. That hasn't arrived yet, but that should be here pretty soon. So for tonight, this is fine. It just gives me an idea of what it's like to sleep in here, how much room I've got and how it basically works. But yeah, it is cool having everything in here. I mean, there is so much space. Let me show you here. I mean, I've even got room to put a tripod up. That's how much space there is. Also, what this tent has is this nice little pull-out bit. I think this is what the upgraded version has. I don't know if the non-upgraded version has that, but it's a little pull-out bit to let more air come in. And these side bits here that I haven't pulled out with the guide rope, that also, I think, is new on the upgraded. So in terms of sleeping bag as well, I am using my normal car camping one for tonight. Now, I'll probably need to invest in a smaller one, mainly because it'll be easier to pack and carry in the rucksack. So a while ago, when I did the review of the All Powers 200, I mentioned I had an idea for how I could use it. Well, this was that idea. Well, specifically solo wild camping, because I can basically use the 200 to charge my phone, charge my camera batteries, charge my drone if I had it, but also my idea originally was I could use that new rice cooker that I've got because it's only 110 watts and this is 150 watts. So in theory, it could have powered it. But the reason why I've kind of turned against that idea is because of the simple fact that I'd have the rice cooker as a big piece of kit to carry in my bag, but it can only do rice. I wouldn't be able to boil water with it. So I have a new plan now for how I'm gonna cook when I wild camp. And to some extent, I could actually even use it for car camping now that the weather's nice. So let me show you what I bought. What this cooker has, which is quite cool, is that it has two different fittings. It has the standard fitting that would go onto the gas canisters, but the reason why I bought it was because it also comes with this little beauty. And what this does, that plugs onto these. So you can power your camping gas with these canisters. Now the reason why that makes me so happy is because I have quite a few of these left from car camping. So I wanted to find a way of cooking that utilized these. And I actually only found this this morning on Amazon. So one thing I'm interested to see later on is just how bright this tent is from the outside 
with this little light on because that'll be quite an important thing to know when actually wild camping and how disguised the tent has to be. So I think I could actually make this more spacious. I can't bother to do it now, but on the middle, you see that there? Well, that is where this, the inner, is attached to the outer. And I'm guessing if I make the outer more wider, whatever that word is, then that's gonna pull this out more. There's one on both sides, so I'm thinking that's how you make the sides go out more. So I haven't thought an awful lot yet about exactly where I'm going to do my first wild camp. I live relatively close to the North Downs Way. I'm drivable to the South Downs Way and there's quite a lot of country parks and woodland close to where I live. So I fancied the idea of doing something local, not going too far, just to keep it simple because much like people doing their first car camp, the idea of doing a wild camp is that lovely little scary feeling that you have. So yeah, I need to think a little bit more about where I can actually do this. But in terms of couples, what our idea for having this tent is twofold. Basically, the plan is for us not to wild camp together. There's no way that would work, just in terms of the whole toileting option. But basically what we're thinking we'll do is, we can do a multi-day involving the tent and the car. So we can go to a campsite, say Friday night, have the car next to us, sleep in the tent. And actually we can take the privacy tent out like we did when we went car camping before. So we can use the privacy tent as a kind of kitchen area and a changing area, sleep in here. What we can then do is do a stealth car camp the next day or vice versa, you see what I mean? So we can do a multi-day involving tent camping and stealth car camping. Well, given the fact that the tent is starting to fill up with mozzies, I'm guessing I should cook and then shut this bit up at least. certainly a success. And as the whole point of this night is to basically learn from my setup, what I learned from that is that to cook a meal like that if I was wild camping would be a bit of a pain in the backside. So I think what I need to think about are the kind of meals that are gonna be easy. And to be honest, I think that's gonna be boiled water and a pot noodle. <laughs> so I'm looking at the frame and the outer. Should they marry up, I wonder? Does that mean I've not pulled the outer down enough? I mean, it's not very tight on the outer, I must say. I'm not sure how tight it needs to be. So I haven't pitched a tent, or I've never pitched a tent, so I'm guessing the outside should be a lot more taller than what it is. But that's us with the front door shut, so the mozzies aren't gonna get in now at least. And it is lovely and airy in here with that window at the back behind us and that window there. Part of me was quite hoping that it would rain tonight because it would be quite interesting to see what it's like to be inside the tent in a downpour. But I've checked the forecast and 
there is no rain on the horizon and even then the temperature actually looks quite good tonight as well it's going to be 10 degrees at its lowest point and that's not till four o'clock in the morning something else i'm finding quite interesting being in here is that the ground in my garden definitely isn't flat i can see it on the um, thing on the camera too it's slanting that way quite a lot now if i was in the car i'd be feeling really motion sick round about now as you'll know but for some reason i'm not really feeling it now i mean i've just been laying down as well and i could feel the slant but it wasn't affecting me so i wonder if being closer to the ground actually makes that not as bad And with that we can now properly test what the lighting in here is actually like because it is now proper dark outside and this little light actually performs really well this is it on its medium setting or low setting and that's the high setting and actually it's really good i'm well impressed with it well two great things have happened one i found a great way to film inside a tent where i've got good lighting and you can see me and secondly the rain has come and also a good test to make sure the tent's actually watertight clearly it is but you never know i might have pitched it wrong which wouldn't put it past me now i do have my little sleep mask again tonight and i think i am going to need it because there are a lot of environmental noises from planes going overhead to buses and lorries thundering down the main road to neighbours going in and out of their garden to, to rain on the tent so I think that white noise will definitely help me but I think in terms of when you're wild camping I suppose you want to hear what's going on don't you because you need to hear if anything's going on or if anyone's outside well it's 10 past 10 and I think it is time for me to get into the sleeping bag and turn all the camera gear off it's not too bad in the tent it must be said nearly said car <laughs> it's not too bad in the tent i mean it is only 10 degrees outside upwards so it's not too surprising there is some air coming through which is nice to have the through breeze coming in through the front then out through the back so that's quite nice to have the air circulation and um i'm sure i'll still appreciate that in the middle of the night we shall see but yeah I will see you again in the morning, no night. No. Well, good morning and I have survived my first night in the tent although I didn't sleep particularly well it must be said the thing is with a tent you can hear absolutely everything outside even little bitty insects scuffling along next to the side of the tent it's really hot outside and the tent is absolutely roasted although this is good because although it didn't rain an awful lot last night the tent is basically drying off although interestingly where I had the foam on the floor is actually quite damp under the foam but I don't get why because you have the ground mat and then you have obviously the inner itself and yet it's still damp under the foam so I mean it could be I suppose condensation couldn't it much like when you're in a car it's possible and the one thing I was right about which I thought I vaguely remembered was making sure that the outer and the inner aren't touching because where they were touching over here you could see a little bit of not wet but you could see where it was damp on the inner so i've learned i need to make sure that i separate them out properly put the guy lines in properly and even put in the middle guy line that the um, upgraded version has so these are all good things that i've learned on my first go the tent itself for solo is more than sufficient there is absolutely stacks of room and by that logic then there's going to be more than enough room for couples obviously we're not going to have the room to put stuff but we're going to be on a campsite so we can use the car for storage and the tent only has to be used 
for sleeping. And that's why I think couples camping will work really well for us. And why, although on one level you'd think, well, you've got the car, it's just a car camp. The point is when you're car camping, then storage is always an issue because everything has to be in the car where you're sleeping. But actually with camping using the car, the car can be storage and then all we have to have in here is sleeping stuff and the privacy tent you can get changed in. So it just makes it a more pleasant experience. So I think it has actually really good potential to serve us really well in the future. I'm going to drink my coffee and then I'm going to pack up and head back indoors but I think overall this has been a really good test of both the tent and all my gear I've kind of learned what works what doesn't work what I need what I don't need um, I haven't thought of anything that I haven't got that I needed I think what I've more learned is that a lot of stuff that I took in that green box I don't actually need so that was good that's what I wanted to do from this and more importantly I've reminded myself of what it's like to actually sleep inside a tent so yes I hope you've enjoyed this kind of weird video more of a tutorial test kind of thing so until next time take care don't forget the first rule of wild camping, leave no traces. <laughs>